RF Man here. Today I'd like to talk about transmission line effects. Basically we have different types of coax that we use for our transmission lines and we use different lengths and different types. Uh, some have more loss than others. Um, some have higher velocity factors. Some have lower velocity factors. So we're going to talk about how that affects our transmission line and how that ultimately affects our output power. So what I have here, I built this spreadsheet and I'm going to just show some basic formulas. The wavelength for free space is 300 divided by frequency in megahertz. And that gives me the wavelength in meters. Or I can take the wavelength to divide the frequency by 984.25 and that gives me the wavelength in feet. Okay, now that's the wavelength in free space. The wavelength in a piece of coax is much different. Okay, and that equals the velocity factor of the coax times the wavelength and you can do that in either meters or feet. Okay, so what is velocity factor? You can go and search on the web for coax velocity factors and you're going to find a lot of charts and tables out there. They'll show the type of coax and they'll show the velocity factor. Okay, particular coax that I'm using has a velocity factor of 0.66. So that means that basically the, the wave in the coax can travel at 66% of the speed of light. That's basically what it means. Um, it, it's simple as that. So here I got an example. I have my frequency set to 27.2 megahertz. That's the center of the 11 meter band. Okay, so my wavelength applying the first formula in meters would be 11.03 meters, or the second formula up on top there, it would be 36.19 feet. Okay, so that's basically what the wavelength would be in, in free space if we look here. Now, if we factor in the velocity factor of 0.66, then we would take the the wavelength in free space in meters times 0.66 and we see the wavelength of the coax highlighted in yellow there would be 7.28 meters. Okay, so considerably different through the coax when compared to free space. Okay, so now we want to take a look at what happens if we use a length of coax that's a quarter wavelength, length of coax that's a half a wavelength, uh, basically, this, the rules are if, if the load impedance, which is the impedance of your antenna, is greater than the source impedance, which would be the impedance of your transceiver, then we're going to find that we'll have a maximum impedance at a half wave and a minimum impedance at a quarter wave. Now, the opposite is true if the load impedance is less than the source impedance. So pretty easy to remember, I think. Um, so let's go ahead and using an antenna analyzer, let's go ahead and use a dummy load and measure the impedance of each length of coax. So if we go over to my other chart here, bear with me a moment. Okay we can see the different lengths that, that would be used here. So for a quarter wave, and I just converted this into feet, okay, quarter wave length of coax would be, let's call that six feet, and a half wave length, let's call that 12 feet. Okay, so we just confer, converted meters into feet very easily. Okay, so let's go ahead and scan both the quarter wavelength of coax and half wavelength of coax and take a look at what the actual impedances are. All right, so I've got this set up now. I'm using a Stark 100 antenna analyzer. Uh, these are available on the internet for about $150 or so. Um, so here I have this set to the 11 meter band I am using a six foot cable, which is a quarter wave length cable, as we calculated. Okay, and we'll go ahead and just put this up to twenty-seven point 
2. That's where we did our calculations. And you can see the SWRs are equal to 1.02, and the impedance is equal to 45 ohms. Okay, now that's the real part. This meter can also calculate the imaginary part, which is J, right, which would be our capacitive reactants and inductive reactants. And you can see that the imaginary part is equal to zero. Okay, so this is purely a resistive load. There's the capacitance zero, there's the inductance, and now we're back to the impedance of 45 ohms. Okay, so this is for a quarter wavelength of cable, which is approximately six feet. And that's, what, that's what we have connected up to my dummy load, as you see down there. So next, we're going to test a piece of 12-foot coax and, and see, is there a difference in the impedance? All right, so... Now we've taken that six feet of coax, we added another six foot section, making it 12 feet, which is a half a wavelength, and what do we see? We see a slight increase in the SWRs, but we see a significant increase in the impedance. We went from 45 ohms to 62 ohms. So some, some quit the arithmetic, that's 17 ohms of impedance. Now that's the real part. Let's do the same thing. There's the imaginary part, which is zero. Capacitance, zero. Inductance, zero. And then we're back to measuring the overall impedance. So what did we say? We basically said that if the load impedance is greater than the source impedance, so the antenna impedance is greater than the transceiver impedance, okay, and there would be a difference when we add our transmission line, okay, that the half wavelength impedance would be greater than the quarter wavelength impedance, or a 12-foot piece of coax would have a higher impedance than the 6-foot piece of coax. And that's exactly what we see here. And that matches our calculations. Okay, now if it was the other way around, where the load impedance would be less than the source impedance, then we'd have the maximum impedance for the quarter wavelength, which would be 6 feet, and the minimum impedance for the half wavelength, which would be the 12 foot piece of coax. Okay, so let's see how this then affects our output power. Okay, so I'm using my Cobra 25 as usual. I've got this set up with my bird line section. I'm using a, a 10 watt slug, as you can see there. And we'll go ahead and measure the, the output power, okay? 10 watts is on the lower end of the scale there. And we'll just do a dead key for this demo. So you can see I'm dead keying at about 3.8 watts or so, okay, on the bird meter. And that would be with the 6-foot length of coax cable, which is a quarter wavelength. Remember that gave us the, the minimum impedance. So now we'll go ahead and see the effects of changing from a 6 foot, which is quarter wave, to a 12 foot length of cable, which is half wave. Okay, so now we've replaced the 6 foot piece of coax cable. We've added another 6 feet. So that gives us a total of 12 feet, which is a half a wavelength. Okay, so remember, with the quarter wavelength of cable, the six foot piece, we were at 3.8 watts. So let's see what it is now. I left the power output the same on the Cobra 25. So let's dead key it and see what the power output now is with the 12 foot piece of coax. And you can see that's about 4.6 watts. So we went from 3.8 watts to 4.6 watts, or an increase of 800 milliwatts. So if you do the calculation, that's about an 18% increase in the overall power output. Now you'll see this with low levels of power. You'll see basically the same percentages with high levels of power. So it's significant. So the rule of thumb here is if my load impedance is greater than my source impedance, right, then we're going to have a maximum impedance at the half wavelength. 
and we saw that. We measured the 6-foot cable was 45 ohms, the 12-foot cable was 62 ohms, so a significant difference. We also saw a significant difference in the power output. So what does all this mean? Well, we should consider the total length of our coax, and under this condition, where the load impedance is greater than the source impedance, we would end the length of transmission line in a half wave. So I would just have to calculate multiples of half waves and make sure that my total cable length ends in a half a wave. Okay, and that will give me the maximum power output. Okay, if the opposite is true, if the load impedance is less than the source impedance, then we'd end it in a quarter wave. And we need to consider the entire system, the coax used inside the amplifier for our relay circuit, and then the terminations to our watt meter, and then from the watt meter to the antenna. So that's the general rule, okay? In this case, my load impedance is greater than my source impedance as I measured. So I ended the cable length in a half a watt and I saw an 18% increase in the power output. So this is something to bear in mind, keep in mind when you're designing amplifiers and you're designing your transmission line to your antenna. Um, if you follow this general rule, you'll have a higher output and a, and a better match. So just wanted to share that with everyone. Um, this is the RF man. Thank you.